Hey everybody, so today we're going to be taking a look at how to write body paragraphs, right? So we already know how to write an introduction along with the thesis statement, and now we're going to see how we can expand on the ideas that we introduced earlier in the paper, right? And what you want to make sure that you do is follow the four steps into creating an ideal body paragraph, right? This includes um, a transition sentence or a traditional phrase, right? Um, a topic sentence and evidence, right? And finally, a relation to the thesis, right? You follow these four steps and you're able to sort of create an ideal uh, body paragraph, right? Now, the body paragraphs essentially are the meat and potatoes of your argument, right? And um, you want to make sure that you include these steps. I included this sample body paragraph here. Don't be intimidated by it. It's just about um, three to five sentences long. It's not that long, right? Um, so we'll take a look at it and break it down into those different parts, right? So we'll begin right here. It says, although many people claim that students, uh, that Starbucks can um, over-caffeinate students, it should be built because it will keep them focused in class. According to a study conducted by the University of Harvard, coffee improves memory along with attentiveness and awareness. Additionally, uh, coffee can enhance short-term memory. Ultimately, the effect of coffee outweighs the cons, leading to student success. All right. So let's pretend we kind of know already what's being said from the very beginning, right? Taking a look at the introduction and the thesis, right? If we want to say that there's a sort of benefit to creating a Starbucks on campus, right? Let's say we want to build one uh, at a university or at a college, right? And there's not one there, let's do it. But people want to know the reasons as to why you want to build it. Right? So let's say one of the reasons is that um, it will create um, a, a more focused student environment. Right? So we'll have focused students right? and we'll also have um, a more a sense of community. Right? And finally, we'll also have um, this idea of more money coming into the school. Right? So the first one again, right? we have uh, focused students community and more money coming in right those are the three reasons why we should have a Starbucks here right the first reason right is the idea that students will be focused that's what the entire body paragraph is going to focus on all right so our first step is a transitional sentence right um, then we'll get into it topic sentence evidence and relation to the thesis right so the first part says although many people claim that Starbucks can over caffeinate students it should be built because it will keep them focused in class. What we have right here, begin with a, um, a traditional phrase, which is although, right? Although lets you know that there are opinions from two different sides, right? We have yours and theirs, right? They say, I say, right? And what you want to make sure that you do is that you sort of let other people, let people know what the opinions of other people are so that you can let people know what you're going to say in the next part of the sentence, right? So we say, although many people claim that Starbucks can over caffeinate students, right away, we already know that there are people who are against the Starbucks being made, right? The next part, it says, it should be built because it will keep them focused in class, right? The part that it says it should be built, that's your argument. We want to make sure you support that with one supporting detail first. We want to start with one, because that's what we're going to focus on is just one, right? One supporting detail. Um, it will keep them focused in class, right? It will keep them focused in class. And that's what we want, what we're going to take a look at for the rest of the paper, right? Or for the rest of the body paragraph, at least. Um, right, so you begin with a transitional, a transitional phrase, right? And then we have our first topic sentence, right? Um, this is the entire topic sentence right here. It's included with the transition and the topic because that's what we're going to include. Topic sentences again are, are supporting details. Um, and then we have evidence. We want to make sure we prove our point. The first piece of evidence that we have here is, well, according to a study conducted by the University of Harvard, coffee improves memory along with uh, awareness, oh, sorry, attentiveness and awareness, right? So we begin with a comma, which separates your words from the quotation from other uh, pieces of research, right? So we have our ethos rhetoric right here. Um, it, it begins with a quotation mark, our beginning quotation mark, and our ending quotation mark, right? And then we have a period, right? So 
the, your words end right here until the phrase or quote from the other source. So this is from Harvard, as we know. And they say that coffee improves memory along with attentiveness and awareness, right? You end it with a period and then you end it right here with your end quotation. That's one way of including evidence in in-text citation. There's another way, and I'll show you right here in the next sentence, right? Another way of including evidence within text citation is saying this. Additionally, coffee can enhance short-term memory. According to, right, we have right here, medical news today. You don't even have to include the word according to, right? We don't really need to include that. We already know because you included it right here at the very end of your sentence with these marks right here. towards the very, uh, towards the beginning and the end of your source right here, you include those brackets, right? You include the open bracket and then you close the bracket right here, right? That's where the source is coming from. So you don't have to say, uh, according to medical news today, no, you just include the quote, no quotation marks needed, as you can see, and you just put the, uh, the brackets at the end, right? So quotation or no quotation, at the end of the day, you wanna make sure you're citing your sources, right? And um, right here at the very end, we say ultimately the effect of coffee outweighs the cons leading to student success, right? Finally, we have a relation to the thesis. All this that's included down here, ultimately, will relate back to your thesis statement's supporting detail, right? We want to make sure everything that you include comes full circle, right? Um, and one of the biggest things that you want to include are another transitional phrase right here at the very end. Right? Ultimately, lets you know at the end of the day, right? Um, in the end, right? It's ending with a really strong note right there, right? Um, and essentially, those are the biggest parts of writing body paragraphs. This is all for one specific supporting detail, right? In your papers, you want to make sure they include around two to three, right? Um, and that will create a substantial amount of um, uh, work for your uh, papers to sort of be um, in the ideal shape that you want them to be, right? And those are body paragraphs. Okay.